In this video I'm looking at the periodic trends in the first ionization energy. We're going to look at the trends in a group and we're going to look at the trends going across a period. And just a quick reminder of what we mean by periodicity or periodic trends. It's the regular repeating patterns in the properties of elements. So we'll start with what do we actually mean by first ionization energy. So if we look at the equation first of all, it's just a generic equation for the atom X. So we've got one mole of gaseous X atoms and we are turning them into one mole of gaseous X plus ions. How do we do that? Well we need to remove Essentially, a mole of electrons would be removed from a mole of atoms. You could phrase it like this. So, the first ionization energy is the energy required to remove one electron from each of these atoms in a mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of gaseous one plus ions. So you can see I've drawn a little diagram there. At the bottom in green, we've got the atom represented just literally by this shell with the outermost electron in with the nucleus. So why does energy need to be supplied to get this electron out? Well, of course, there's going to be an attraction between the nucleus and the electron because what's in the nucleus? Protons and neutrons. Protons have a positive charge, neutrons have no charge, and so the nucleus is positively charged, and therefore these will attract each other. Before we start looking at the trends in the groups and across the periods, we'll just think about the factors that would influence the amount of energy required to get this electron out. So if you pause the video now and have a think about those factors, we'll go through the answers in a moment. The first factor I look at is nuclear charge. So all that's about is how many protons are in the nucleus. What's the charge of the nucleus, in other words? So as the number of protons increases in the nucleus, the nuclear charge increases, and basically that will increase the attraction between the nucleus and the outermost electron. Atomic radius has also got to be a factor. So in other words, the distance between the nucleus and the outermost electron is going to influence the amount of energy required to take the electron out. And it's common sense that the closer the electron is, to the nucleus, the stronger the force of attraction and therefore more energy would be required to get the electron out. The other factor we'll look at is shielding. So electrons live in these shells. So the more shells there are between the outermost electron and the nucleus, these will shield the sort of attraction and actually weaken it so the more shielding there is the less the attraction is going to be and therefore less energy would be needed to get the electron out so we'll start by looking at the trends in a group and you can see that I've underlined the word any there because what we're going to say is um, applicable to all groups in the periodic table I'm going to use group 7 to demonstrate it because I've got these pictures already printed out. So we'll look at the factors. Any answer to do with ionization energy must include these factors. That's what the examiner is going to be looking for. And then we just pull it together at the end and say so the energy would be greater as a result or less as a result. Okay so nuclear charge. So fluorine, how many protons has fluorine got? Well it's got nine protons. Chlorine has got 17 protons. So, chlorine has actually got a greater nuclear charge than fluorine. So you might be thinking, right, well, that means it should require more energy 
to get this outermost electron away from the attraction of the nucleus. But we've also got to factor in atomic radius. So which atom's got the largest atomic radius? Well, it's this one. So chlorine has got um, a greater nuclear charge, but the atomic radius is greater. So the attraction is actually going to be weakened by that increase in atomic radius. So you can see I've added a little bit of extra detail now. We've got nine protons in fluorine versus 17 protons in chlorine, but fluorine has a smaller atomic radius, chlorine has a larger atomic radius. So if we look at the shielding factor now, so the nucleus is shielded, the attraction from the nucleus is being shielded by one inner shell in fluorine before we get to this outermost electron, whereas chlorine, the nucleus is being shielded by two inner shells. So there's more shielding in chlorine, less shielding in fluorine, and so again that's going to weaken the attraction as well as the atomic radius being larger. So you can see I've added that information there now. So I'll we'll just recap. Fewer protons, so lower nuclear charge, but it's got a smaller atomic radius and less shielding. So the outermost electron in fluorine is actually more strongly held than the outermost electron in chlorine due to the extra shielding, larger atomic radius. So these obviously outweigh the increased nuclear charge. And so when you go to the data books, you can see that the first ionization energy for fluorine, the enthalpy change for that is positive. So remember that's endothermic. Energy has to be supplied to make the process happen. 1,680 kilojoules per mole. Whereas chlorine's first ionization energy is positive 1260 kilojoules per mole so less energy is required to perform the first ionization energy for chlorine than fluorine and if we look at bromine now yes that's got more protons in its nucleus so that's going to have 35 protons in there but it's got an extra shell shielding the attraction between the nucleus and the outermost electron and it's also got a greater atomic radius. So even though it's got a greater nuclear charge, the increased shielding and the increased atomic radius will outweigh that. See I've written that on blue there and that will mean that less energy is required to remove the outermost electron. So bromines will be even less still. And looking at my data book, bromines is actually 1140, so it's less again. If we just slide this up, you'll see the iodine picture. And you can see it's got a larger atomic radius. It's got another shell shielding the attraction. So even though it's got more protons, greater nuclear charge, they are out, that's outweighed by the, these factors here. And so iodine's first ionization energy is 1110. So that's less again than bromine. And then I'll just go to astatine. And for the same reasons we've already discussed, astatine has an even lower first ionization energy and it's 910 kilojoules per mole. So the overall trend in any group, first ionization energy decreases down any group. Why? Well, the increased nuclear charge is outweighed by the increased atomic radius and the increased shielding. And because of these two factors here, the attraction between the nucleus and the outermost electron gets weaker. So less energy needed to remove the outermost electron the processes become less endothermic.